Okay. Hey y'all, y'all already know what this is. This is your guy Prince Onyx here, and this is my friend Adina, aka Princess Adina, because you know here at the Prince Onyx channel, all of my friends are princes and princesses. Let's yeah. go ahead and get into it. So today, we are here to give y'all the Empire review Life. for the episode. E Life. Tell them we are here to give y'all the Empire review Life. for the episode six, which is titled "Out Damned Spot." Uh, listen, I'll, I listen. I am not the messenger, but anyway. Keep it moving. So pretty much, we start off the episode with Cookie. Um, we start off the episode with Cookie getting dressed to go out to meet up with Lucius. And pretty much, you know, she's just looking at herself in the mirror, checking herself out, and all that good stuff. And then she gets the idea to wear something very, you know, sexual and kinky, if you will. So she goes to the yeah. restaurant, covered up in the fur coat, and she, you know, is looking around. And then her and Lucius are going to go upstairs to this uh, part that they, you know, that Lucius had bought bought out for him and Anika's, you know, announcement of engagement or whatever. So pretty much they get up there and, um, you know, she just pretty much sits down and, you know, you can already tell Cookie is a little pressed because she got dressed up in what we, you know, find out moments later was lingerie. She got dressed up expecting something else to go down. So Lucius made the announcement that him and Anika were getting married. And if you pay close attention, it seems like Anika is more in love with the ring than she is with Lucius yeah. because... It's just, I, here's the thing, even oh, Kayla has said, yeah. even Kayla has said this, with Cook, with Anika, it seems like she's just there for the lifestyle. She yeah, is she's very been, material. She's being like that her parents raised her to be that type of female, because look at her mom. I look mean, at her mom. She, and, and then on top of that, her husband is like, you know, he racist. How were he racist and he married this black couple? Exactly. Like, she's blacker what? than me. She's blacker than me. You put together. Listen, child, he'll be racist towards the black man, but won't be racist towards the black woman. woman. I Come swear. On, really. The blacker the berry, the sweeter the juice. Exactly. The, dark, the darker the skin, the deeper the roots. Yeah. Come on now. But anyway, so yeah, she um she pretty much got pissed. And, you know, Cookie just pretty much was doing a whole, he loves me, he loves me, not throwing a flower petal. She was really throwing that shit towards Rhonda way, if y'all didn't really catch that. But, I mean, Andre and Rhonda, they don't really give a fuck about nobody but themselves. Anyway... She just pretty much, you know, threw the rose at him, and she pretty much told him that I ain't get all dressed like this for nothing, showing it all, showing it all. Good. And then she turned it's before she left. Age. Like, before, she, before, see him age. she really does. And then she before she left, beautiful. and then before she left, man, she told Anika that this is what an ass looks like. I believe me. And child, listen, I don't care what y'all say to Roger's ass is not fake. That is real right there. Y'all think jiggled. it's fake. It Thank must you. be jelly because it ain't peanut butter. That's what it is. It ain't peanut butter at all. It's jelly. Exactly. Jelly. It jiggled like when she, when she hit it, it was Exactly. Her ass is real. Just is let y'all know. So pretty much, uh, let's see what happened next. I'm trying to remember. Do you remember what happened next? I'm sorry, y'all. We didn't take no notes this time. If you can tell. I'm trying to see. So after that, I want to say, hmm. Oh, so Cookie and Jamal and Michael. Anyway, they are <laughs> listening. <laughs> they are listening to Jamal's new song, "Keep Your Money," which was recorded on the last episode. And, you know, pretty much it's about to blow up. It's about to, you know, really go there. It's about I to get on the charts. For her. She was supposed to come to the, um, to the club to talk to that guy to promote his music. Oh, no, wait, that was, oh, no, wait, that was later. That was later. But, no, that, that, that's happening, though, but that was oh. later. So, yeah, um, she pretty much, they was listening to the song, and then, you know, Jamal just said that he needed her on her A game this time, and she promised him that she's really oh, yeah. about that. And, uh, so, yeah, she pretty much walked off to go take care of some business. And then you have Michael who, um, you have Michael who was following behind Cookie and then he was asking her, you know, if she was seeing a change in Jamal because, you know, he's just been acting different lately. And so, She you warned know, him, like, she told him that fame is going to change people and you need to, you know, you need to get in your A-game, like, you need to keep yourself occupied while he's doing his thing and the only thing he's keeping himself occupied is going to cooking school. But as you can see, he's going to school during the day, and then at night he at home with Jamal most of the day and all night. And Jamal works like every he works day. 20, he works twenty four seven, yeah, every day. So he needs to be doing something as well. Like he could have been having an internship at like one of them big top, you know, restaurants, a five star restaurant with some shelves. Because he would have kept himself busy. Like he needs to be busy just like Jamal. That's why that relationship is not going to work out. It's going to crumble because. 
He's like, it's busy. You don't care. It's like, you don't care at all. And he's like, when he slide out, you're going to slide your DMs in. Listen, you're damn, you're damn right. Listen, <laughs> all I'm going to need, need Michael to do is move his ass out the way and just make room for all this right here. So, right. Michael, 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 for all this right here. So, oh I'm just saying, listen. I mean, hey, he needs somebody that's on it. Hey, hey, hey. Need somebody that's on your level. This guy. You can't say no to a face like this. Oh, my goodness. Oh can't my say no goodness. to a face like this. But anyway. So, yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay, what else? Okay, what happened next? We are really... We didn't take no notes, y'all. What happened next? What happened next? Let me see. Listen, we're going to be all over the place. Y'all just forgive us. Why are we so, going to go back to the Hey, you want to go back to it? And just trying to watch it verbatim? No, let me see. All right, we finna do the bootleg yeah. on y'all, but it's gonna be on mute because we don't need yeah, I don't need YouTube giving me strikes. I don't need no striking. You're out. No, hell no, not me, not the boy, not the kid. No. Child, YouTube got that three strike limit. I don't need that shit. Listen, bitch. Oh, uh, and another one. Uh. Uh-uh. Oh well, you know what? We can't. Well, let's talk about the little scenes right quick. So a few. What? When I say little scenes, I it's like the um. My booty again. It's when like, I say the little amazing, like <laughs> oh my goodness, it was like. When I say the I little scenes, good. basically I'm talking about the little scenes that happen in between the big things, big you know, grand scheme of shit in the episode. So pretty much, um, what happened was, I think that next we saw Lucius at his house, uh, watching the video to drip drop, and he was gonna get him some something to eat, some more like meat or fruit or something, and then he got the shakes from his ALS. He uh, yeah. then saw on his camera that the detective was meddling back in his business, looking through his trash. He called Vernon over, and um, they were talking. And Vernon just wanted to know, did you kill Bunky or not? Lucius told him the truth, flat out there. He didn't lie. He didn't, well, he kind of did lie, but he didn't, you know, he didn't beat around the bush. He just let him know, let him know. that, you know, Bunky had came to him, and he was begging for money. He was jealous of you and me. And I killed him, you know, and Vernon, you could tell that Vernon was hurt by it, but it, here's the thing, y'all, I think that Vernon is up to something of his own. Pretty much everybody in this show has a motive. Don't think that they don't. Everybody in this show, everybody outside of the Lion family, like here's the Lion family, and everybody around them has their own ulterior motive, so don't think that they don't. And it's like with Vernon... You could tell that, yes, he is pissed off and hurt at the fact that Bunky was killed by none other than Lucius. But you can tell that him, his friend, his, his friend, friend, and damn their family, like, you know, yeah. he killed them. So you could tell oh, that Vernon's going to come up with something because we all know that Vernon and Andre are up to something of their own. So who's to say that Vernon ain't really out for him looking for himself? Because, I mean, okay, yeah, you working with Andre, but who's to say that you and him probably won't stab each other in the back? Again, everybody is out for an arterial motive. Even Andre, even though he's a part of the Lion family, everybody is out for something. Even though he's a part of the Lion family, even he's in that circle of people who are out to get something. So that's one of the little scenes. Another one was when Lucius was talking to the doctor, and pretty much the doctor told him, um, the okay. doctor told him that the, the drug that, you know, over there in Russia that they hold medical practice, the medical field mm-hmm. is very corrupt just like the rest of the country. the country. But he didn't care because, oh... Uh, uh, he wants to basically be selfish and live longer. Exactly. He wants to live longer and he but don't really give a damn. But little did he know, though. Little did he know you don't do... Experimental you don't do, shit. Especially experimental stuff for humans. You don't do that like in the black market and stuff because that's what messes you up. And that's how people end up killed. Dying and stuff and their bodies messed up because of that black market stuff. It's not that serious. It's really not. It's really not. And so Lucius pretty much, you know, gets the drug and him and Anika are at the house and, you know, they try it. They, you know, he's doing the drug or whatever, taking it. And pretty much the doctor just let him know, without this drug, you're pretty much dead. Which we find out in the next episode is a lie because even with the drug, you're still dead. Man, by the way, y'all, we are looking at the episode again. We just have it on mute because we're just trying to make sure that we, you know... Because we're trying to go bit by bit, yeah. but it's like I'm just taking care of the little scenes that happen in between. Oh, and then another thing. Vernon had met with some guy. He met with two different guys. One of them was, I don't, I don't know, maybe like a detective or something. And the other one was, was some type of sketchy guy. So he met with two different guys and pretty much, you know, as a part of um, trying to help Lucius cover up his tracks. Yeah. And so um the first the detective guy they pretty much agreed on trying to get somebody some you know random hood nigga in the streets 
get him and pay his family off while he takes the rap for killing Bonky. And then, oh yeah, this is the part where Taraji had, you know, revealed herself. So we just watching this. I want to see how booty is going to jiggle. Child, listen. I just, oof. Yes. That's the name. Oh, boy. She let her know. She let her know what's up. <laughs> anyway, y'all, Um, let me see. So, yeah, Vernon met with the detective. And pretty much he was, um, he met with the detective. And they found the guy... Um, they pretty much found the guy, some random street dude, to take the rap for uh, for killing Bunky, and then you know, pretty much that sort of puts the nail in the coffin, if you will, for this whole this whole part of the storyline. But really, you have to think about it. Fast forward. Oh wait, I don't think you can. Not on demand. I think only on the DVD. You know what? You can. Yeah, you can't. So you just gotta let it play. Unfortunately. Hi. Yeah. So I mean, you know. So yeah, I'm finna say, so yeah, pretty much, you know, he, that pretty much put the nail in the coffin for the whole little case with the detective, but really, you gotta think about it, because, you know, they didn't tell the guy who he was, you know, taking yeah, the rap for. Yeah, they didn't tell the guy who they he didn't was taking the rap for. They just know that he was gonna give him a large amount of money, and he was gonna use it to his family. Exactly. So, but before that, they was gonna give him the money, he has to sign a paper to say that he killed one Exactly. So pretty so much you have to sign over a test, mm-hmm. write a statement, and sign it. Everything. And you know. He that he killed him. So hopefully, you know, he gets into jail. And it wasn't for like you know, money or none of that. So he gets killed a random guy because he said that. Well, no, no, according to him, it was about money because he tried to. He was trying to rob him and Bunky. Oh, back. Yeah. yeah. He so was so trying to rob so him and Bunky had fall back, so right. he shot him and rolled him into the river. Yeah. So pretty much, you know. That was that, and I'm trying, oh, another little scene that really pissed me off, and, you know, really pissed the both of us off, was when Anika got into the elevator with That Portia. pissed me off, like, go ahead, go no, ahead. that really made me mad, because it's like, now you're trying to use Portia against Cookie, like, girl, you're not Cookie, you not, you don't understand, see, Portia, the reason why Portia and Cookie are good together is because they both are from the hood, and they understand each other. And it, it, it's not even really they both from the hood, but they understand each other as being a female from the hood, from the street, as you can see. Or they have somebody that they know that's about their life, and they about their life because someone that they know is about their life. So that really made me mad when she just came out of nowhere. Well, I could give you more money because she's not paying you that much. I'm like, hell, so who is you? All you care about is money. You are not fit. To be running in a day on streets like me, like this is not for you. This is not your ministry. This is Cookie's ministry. She's really good at finding music. She all, all she's good at is like really the money. All she wants is empire for herself and by herself. She don't care about none of them other people. Like that's why um Lucius is dying soon because the daddy he told the daddy that if he dies soon, that girl instant will have that instant being in that because he's going to marry her. That's why he's killing him. He recommended that doctor to him for a reason because that doctor knew that he was going to tell him about that Russian stuff. He killed him for a reason. They, they Damn, that just made sense. Yes. Not to cut you all, that just made sense. See, I did not just fucking tell y'all. I'm sorry. Listen, you over here at the Prince Onyx channel, the filter comes off like a motherfucker. Didn't I just tell y'all that everybody's out for an arterial murder? Yeah. And then with Lucius... God damn, I can't talk. Anyway, with Lucius, pretty much, with Lucius telling her fucking father that if he dies, she becomes an instant billionaire. Of course, the father the is going to recommend, to recommend a, doctor. a doctor that's going to know about that medicine. That's why he did that. I said, I was like, what? Child, listen, don't believe, don't believe motherfuckers when they say money can't buy motherfuckers out here because it can. It money can. can buy motherfuckers, and this is a clear depiction of that it is because a clear he depiction. pretty much and then in the next that. and then in a preview for the next episode, the the uh, the female doctor, the woman doctor, whatever the doctor, she tells him. That the drug that you're taking, oh yeah, it's another, another, and not just that, but another patient took the same drug and died. And that. So come the hell on now, like, child, listen. That was nothing but for him to get that money to his daughter. Him. And then I'm talking about maybe he realized that he don't like him is the fact that the daddy was like, you ain't nothing but a common criminal. Yeah, you a are a hood, you a thug. He kept telling him that. And then that's when Lucius had offered that uh, bargain for his daughter. I swear he do anything for his daughter because he don't like he don't like Lucius. He despises him. Even the father, the mother despises him. They do not like Lucius at all. They yeah, do I'm not like that, him. They don't. And then on top of that, the mother had mentioned in last episode how 
you know, Lucius was always with a lot of women and stuff like that, and Anika always called him. Bitch, if that was the case, you should have left his ass. I'm, I'm for real, bitch, if that was the case, you should have left his ass. The fuck you still around him for? Like, see, that's how you know Anika, that's how you know she's only there for the fucking money. Because Cookie, she would, of course, beat them bitches' ass, and her and Lucius would have been arguing or whatever, Then they probably would have had great makeup sex and would have moved the fuck on. I'm just, exactly. I'm just saying, like, you know, everybody is out for a fucking ulterior motive. Like, Listen, when I do that video, I might do it today. You, uh, you want to do that video with me? Yeah. I, it's basically a like, video of talking about like uh, theories involving empire. Yeah. So pretty much, you know, really I'm gonna be fun. talking about the different motives and the theories and stuff like that. So that video will be coming right after this. I gotta take some write some shit down because. Which yeah, is gonna be how we get a plan. We it's going all more over. organized than this one. This one was organized. We just said this from our heads because we trying to y'all. We just got done rewatching it. We just got done watching it. So, watching it, so you know, to get them from no Oh, another there. um, another little scene. So Derek Luke, that was the oh actor. In case y'all so don't bad, know, y'all. Derek Luke, he pretty <laughs> much is a uh, ex war veteran, and he pretty much um got hired to be the new head of security for Lucius. I think, um, I forgot why he hired him. I think it was because of the whole detective thing. Yeah, meddling that's, his garbage yeah, that was that and that a whole bunch of other gar- And then he said that they, uh, cameras was like garbage. Like anybody, yeah, anybody can, can break into your system. Anybody can into their system and like crack it down for like a couple of times. Yeah, so pretty he much, his, um. His stuff was whack and you need his to stuff, His shit was faulty. So pretty much he hired him. And so Derek Luke's character is the new, um, head of security. I forgot his, see y'all. I, I'm good with names because it's like, you know, I'm good with names, but I forgot Derek Luke's character name, so I apologize for that one. But basically, um, his character is the new head of security, and then when Cookie had came in to go, you know, go meet up with Jamal, there was a new security system set where you had to put your ID down to, you know, scan the thing and walk through, and pretty much, um, yeah, you had to scan the thing and walk it's through. Andre. And, oh, this is the Andre scene. So yeah, pretty much had to walk through, and you could tell that Luke, uh, Luke and Cookie, they gonna probably hook up, cause the way that they look at each other, you can tell something's gonna happen. They still had that L thing. And you know, now we're okay. So now we kind of catching up with the main stuff that happened. So Andre, he uh was on the phone talking to somebody, and um, Vernon came in and he choked the shit out of Andre. And yeah, threw his ass on the floor. He lightly choked his ass out on the floor, cause he was pissed that you know Lucius killed Bunky, and so. When Andre had covered for him in that last episode or the episode before, he was pissed at him because it's like, you know, he knew something was up with Andre covering for Lucius. And so when he choked the shit out of him, he asked him, Do you did you know that he killed that Lucius killed Bunky? Andre didn't know that shit. And so when he when Vernon told him Andre was pissed, he was very emotional because you could tell that all three of the sons, they loved Bunky. He was like a father figure to him because we all yeah. know Lucius really didn't give a damn about them. He Listen, I don't give a fuck what y'all say. We can tell Lucius didn't really give a damn about these kids until they got older and he could actually use their asses. So pretty much, you know, we all know that he didn't give a damn about them. So pretty much after this, you know, Andre calls Rhonda, who was having a meeting with some people talking about some fashion items, and he tells her that, you know, she was right. No, he tells her that he was right about his father killing Bunky, and you, you can just tell that the look in his face, he's very emotional. So the next thing we have... Jamal and Michael. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> really? You know what? Listen, I'm just saying. Anyway, so yeah, we have Jamal and what's his face? Michael. Him. Yeah, that's him. Anyway, we have them oh, uh, at their little at their little condo, and it's kind of funny because they live in the hood, but they it seems like you know. Oh, they look like they moved on up. Exactly. They look like they moved on up, but they still live in that ragtag ass apartment. Listen, I ain't gonna complain. Yeah, but they but anyway, moved on up though, cause they the apartment guy. Right. True, they moved on so up. So they I had one before. Exactly. So hey, it looked like they Jamal took food. somebody's money. It's, it looked like Jamal took somebody's money because his song talking about keep your money was towards his father. Well, you took somebody's money to fix that place up. He probably had a good job. Exactly. Well, yeah. So pretty much, you know. I don't think he's really pow- prideful. I think he was like the reason why he did this because, like he said, my obedience is no longer for sale. Like, true. I'm not gonna keep obeying you. You keep disrespecting me, so you could just 
so I can just stay here. Hell no, nah. you can keep your damn money. You can keep everything. I don't need shit from you. I can survive. That's why I say that he is the strongest. He really and is. all three of them, how he came with a little ass kid. True. Andre, he bipolar and he, he got a party. He got a party in his. He got a party in his. His head. head. And then Hakeem, like you said, is messed up because mommy issues. Child. Get your mama T D out your mouth. Grow the fuck Literally. up. You know what I mean? Literally, get Grow it out your up. mouth. Like he needs to like grow the fuck up. I'm telling you. And then y'all. you have um Andre. He messed up like he said. He talking to himself like 34 times. Like hi, hi, hi. He just so messed up. His damn sleep and shit. Jamal is the only one. And he, to me in my eyes, Jamal went through hell. He was, he was going deep. through hell. He was going. He went through more more shit than them. Um, Andre and Hakeem. He meant and Andre is the oldest. He went through more shit, and then he's the um, middle too. So that's why I understand how he feel because I'm the middle child too. And exactly. He, he went through a lot of shit though. Exactly. And so, like, you know, with Jamal and Michael, they were pretty much in the kitchen, you know, talking or whatever. And, um, you know, Jamal was asking him why did he talk to his mama and listen to her. But at the end of the day, like my, like Adina just said, Cookie was right. Jamal is about to blow the fuck up. And yeah. down top of that, he is about to become famous. It's like, my thing is this with Michael. Go pursue your dreams of being a chef. That's great. But it's just like one of my fellow YouTubers, Justin J, has said... You know, most of these people who go to these cooking schools don't end up owning their own restaurants or don't even be at the fancy restaurants. They're, you know, at a Red they Lobster at or Red Chili's Lobster. or and something like that, which someone, ain't bad. But if you but, see you know, some of them at the, at one of them, you know, high, high shelf, fancy restaurants, they like in their you know, 30s or something, or exactly, they are young, bring, they know someone, someone that got, got them in the their job. So, and plus yeah. you're bringing in more than just food to the table, if you know, you know what I mean. So pretty much, it's just like um, she basically was saying he needs that to be he someone needs to own his competition because exactly. he's not on his level. And with that being said, what I what I, what you can take from that is when, what Cookie said that Jamal needs somebody on his level. I don't believe that she particularly means somebody who's an artist themselves, but more yeah. so somebody who's maybe an assistant, a publicist, money, a promoter, somebody or in the CEO industry, or something like somebody that, somebody in the industry, top notch company or something. Exactly, somebody in the industry. That at the end of the day, they also have they something. They also pop bottles as well. That too, like and that. they also have something to lose. So they both have, you know, strong titles in the industry. They yeah. have a strong reputation, and if some shit were to happen to either party, both parties are both like individuals John are effective. And his wife, his wife was known for being a model and the acting, but really modeling. This girl got her own money, so. John Legend so, don't have to really care, worry about money and all that stuff because she got her own money. Exactly. Or like, Only unless he's willing to give that to her, but he don't got to worry about giving her money because she got money. Exactly. Or like, you know, Kim and Kanye. Yeah, exactly. Will and, exactly, Will and, Kim and Kanye. Kim and Kanye. Exactly. They Will got money. money. Will and Jada. Will and Jada. Too. Like, you know, Beyonce somebody. Beyonce and Jay-Z. Exactly. Beyonce somebody like that. Beyonce got her own shit. She exactly. don't need no Exactly. Somebody, somebody who's on his level. Yeah, so on their like, level. They, with Michael. They got, that's why they come for, that's why they like good together because they and because, and because they actually understand that each other needs yeah. kind of heart. You can tell then this is no offense to Michael, but he's a needy bitch. He's a he's a he's needy, a needy he's bitch. A bitch. And then also, did you yeah, oh my goodness, like he always like he always needy. He acts like a bottle. He and then most people no, like, don't no, like, he don't he just act like he don't just act like one. He got a pussy, and I'm like, damn, he act like he a female, and I'm a female. I'm a real female. I don't act like that. I'll be like, okay, nigga, go on, have fun at your party, bye. Get the fuck away from me. I would have been, I'm like, I need my own damn me time. I'm sick and tired of your You need to go to your damn party. I don't care. We can cancel that shit. We can do it next week or next year. I don't care. Exactly. I need oh, me, no, no, me, no. Me. And then on a side note, when, um, when Michael and Jamal were talking, this is another one of the small scenes. When Michael and Jamal were talking and they were talking about the song was still, you know, trending online right. or whatever. And um, he found out. Michael found out about the interview that was on Saturday. Yeah. Um, if you, if y'all, if y'all were listening closely, when Michael walked off, he had said some shit in Spanish. In Spanish. And I'm sure he we probably, and I'm sure he probably mean. cursed Jamal the fuck out. And that's why Jamal looked at him like, nigga, what? Like, he just looked at him like, nigga, what? Because like, he just, he said something in Spanish. And I'm sure he probably cursed his ass out. Probably called him a dumbass or some oh, shit. Oh, bitch. Go probably called him a nigga. Not just. <laughs> Probably called him a nigga and just and you wouldn't even know. <laughs> you already did call him a nigga. Probably did on the low. So uh oh, so the next scene was um when Cookie was uh showing she was letting the A and R department listen to Jamal's song 
and they were talking about um, other artists that they might have to start cutting from the label, and they start naming different people. And Courtney Love's character, L. Dallas, who was the uh, Empire's first artist who sold a hundred yeah. and a hundred million records. They were talking about cutting mm -hmm. her because in the last five years she hasn't created a new revenue, you know, to bring money not just for herself but bring money to the label. And Cookie just let them know. Hey, let me put this back on play. Cookie just let them know that y'all can't be cutting her because she's an A-lister, and she pretty much let them know y'all don't know how to control her. She may be uncontrollable to you. But I, I know I think I know how to help her out because her and Cookie, you can tell. Here's the thing, Cookie's character is not just gonna take on no random ass artist. She's gonna take on an artist that she knows that she can work with. Tiana, Jamal, L. Dallas. She can take that. She took she took on these people, you know, because she sees the artistry in them. She sees the future in them. She sees. The, the same talent. exact thing, that the talent. She sees the same exact thing that they see. And she just, you know, lets people, she just let Anika and Andre know that just because of this whole IPO situation, you cannot cut her. You cannot drop her from the label like you're going to drop these other two artists. I forgot who the fuck they are, but they clearly are not that important. She pretty much let them know, you're not going to drop her. I'm going to take her on. I'm going to talk to Lucius and I'm going to manage her and we're going to get this thing popping. And clearly, sure enough, later on in the episode, we see that she does help L. Dallas get her shit together because you can tell that L Dallas she hit them really, with the fucking notes honey. she hit them notes and you can tell that L Dallas was you know going through some shit you know in the last five years maybe more you know doing that stuff and she just you know Cookie just pretty much helped her ass out so you know in the scene where L Dallas meets Cookie she pretty much you know offended she kind of threw shade at Cookie and called her she was like I don't need no I don't want to be managed by no ex-con I'm managed by you know Top names. I work with top name producers. And Lucia like Timberland. Jenny, Timberland, Hit Boy, and then Lucia's let her ass know they're all scared of you. And I was just like, damn, you pretty much can't work with nobody. But pretty much, you know, later on, when she does the studio session, Cookie made her ass take off that fur coat. All that, that plastic material extensions, she everything. They met, they actually made her even more stronger as a woman. It, and because she couldn't have and had she it couldn't no have more. had it no more. And then on top of she that, she always had it away from her problems and stuff. Exactly. And then yeah. on top of that, who the hell comes to the studio all dressed up fancy? I mean, listen, Why? even even ugly. Rihanna and Nikki don't come even to the studio. Iggy and Zayla, she even Iggy and Zayla, she's ugly without makeup. I'm sorry, girl, but you listen. are. Nobody comes Your to the studio. Your eyebrows. I thought uh, your eyebrows was mad. Your eyebrows is not brown, they're, they're girl. Gone. Your eyebrows is as thin as fuck. Like I, you had like one little hair of blonde uh, eyebrows, hair, and that was it. I swear, I was and like, then what it's the just fuck like you know, like Nikki, like Nikki, Rihanna, even Beyonce, all the top names in the industry. They don't come to the studio all dressed up in a fur coat. Sure, and no, they and have that damn makeup. They be sunglasses, sunglasses um, reading glasses. They, and they had they damn had the ponytail or another wig. Exactly, or had they or you know they had they had all what they had on yesterday. Talk about what you they exactly. Gonna ain't nobody gonna be coming to the studio looking all fancy for fucking what? It ain't no damn cameras there. Like you are there to fucking record, unless you're taking hell. Even if you take pictures for the gram, bitch. Why do you need to dress all fancy? Like it's just the fucking studio, like. You know, so I'm glad that Cookie made her ass strip all that shit off. And that is really what she could... I can't believe did when she was on uh, Love and Hip Hop. Child. Lady. Her ugly ass. She ugly as hell without makeup. I'm she sorry. She need help. She need that child. She need uh, that. Tierra Marie, when she had Sandy sat there and said, you have no talent. Like, I clapped to Tierra Marie because that bitch can sing. She, she was really like, can. you have no talent. I was laughing. And at 30 something, you had still fucking trying. And she said, you can't fucking rap for nothing. You can't do shit. And you still and she fucking because how in the hell you want me to stop talking to your man or your fuck buddy because of, uh, I'm, I'm working with him. him. You stupid. I'm not doing that. That's just not, this is money. This is business. Exactly. That's what's wrong. You wouldn't get what the hell you wanted because you opened your damn legs. Exactly. For eight years, I wish I was that's what's on it for eight years. But child, I would have been famous. I would have been more famous exactly. than he ever been. You would have got something out of you. I would have got something out of this motherfucking deal. He I'm got pussy, you, I would have got the signs. What's wrong with you? She shit, and, and on that note, and she dumb. He I'm got fame and pussy. I'm like, dying. I'm telling and then you. He, and then she was like, behind the closed doors, he basically was telling me something else. But I'm like, but you stupid because if he's telling you a national TV, national TV, national television, where everybody named Mama watching, that he do not want to hold you down. He don't want to fuck with you. All he wants to look at you is pussy. He don't want to hold you down and tell her. How many females he want each and every day of the week? 
You're dumb. You're stupid. Exactly. You're like dumb as, as ugly as you look, okay? We had to do a little throwback for y'all to love and hip-hop. For real, that's, a life, that's a life lesson, though. Like, that's the music industry for you right there. Exactly. That was the music industry for you right there. Y'all, listen, y'all better pay attention to this show for all y'all. That really, who, that really know, connects. Who, exactly. For all y'all who want to get into, you know, this industry, pay attention you to this show because Lucius be, Lucius be telling, helpful. Lucius may be the devil, which he is, but he be saying some real shit. Like that whole part with Jamal on the first episode when he was talking about how, you know, the demographics, you got 75% of the white audience and you got the 13% of the black audience. It's like once you get the white audience, you practically have one because they're the ones at the end of the day that will support you. No offense to us, but you know that black folks don't really buy CDs no more. Damn sure don't go on iTunes and download sure shit. Know, People don't. like uh, well, Google Play, Google Play and iTunes. We actually yeah. download shit. So not everybody does it though. So you know yeah, we're we're pretty much the exception. I do. I yeah I do. We're the exception. Some, yeah, you know. I will say that I will buy. Listen, or yeah. I'll have a friend that buy with me or buy for me and he will send it to me because I'm the same way. I like to have that stuff like too. True. Exactly. Like to Y'all know us. We go up on a Tuesday for for Empire DP. <laughs> yeah, like I'm I'm about to buy. Sure. That is song like, from. Um, speaking of that, I was gonna buy um Banks because I love Banks music. I will. I love her music, and I cannot wait till she comes to the House of the Blues because I am going to see her in concert. Like I, I love know, Banks, right. and I was gonna buy her whole CD, her whole goddess CD. I, know, I was gonna buy right. it on my Google playlist because I got. Well, I was, yeah, I was gonna buy it on um, my Windows. I got a Windows song now. Oh, but so I you got a Windows too? Yeah. Oh, Shout out to you, girl. Yeah. I can buy yeah. it on there, and I, can, uh, I always have it on my own. My i my phone my iPod. I can have it on my phone. I can have it on my tablet because I have a Windows tablet. So yep. yeah, I, I won't mind back. I even buy games sometimes. I know. I be having them games on my phone or my iPod. Need something so, to do shit. I buy so games let's see, what sometimes. Else oh yeah. So Michael, Jamal, Portia, and Cookie. They were all at. I think they were at Club Leviticus. They. I, that's pretty much. Listen, y'all. Whatever club, whenever they are at a club in this show, that's nine club times out of ten, it's Club Leviticus. Cause I don't know whatever what other club they gonna fucking be at. That club got so many damn levels. It's gotta have a damn fire a fire uh, warning or whatever. You can't have X amount of people in there. But anyway, um, they were at Club Leviticus and they were pretty much about to premiere Jamal's new song. And um, in the song, I mean, uh, in the club, they uh, put uh, Cookie had the plan to get this famous athlete, this football player. To tweet tweet about the song and promote it. She had a perfect plan. Bring over two fine, beautiful girls with her, and these two girls, you know, was all touching on each other and stuff, and just rubbing on each other, yeah. which is kind of ironic because it's like, you know, it it kind of, it's kind of ironic because they, you know, they were all touching on each other and stuff like that, and it kind of ties back into last week's episode with Tiana and her girlfriend, yeah. and you know how Hakeem was upset at that, but then Lucia was being naive too. I got to talk about him later though. And then you know with, um he was all upset about that, and then Lucia was like, oh, what's better than one girlfriend, two girlfriends? Exactly. It's like, you know with Lucia, yeah. it's like you mad that you mad at your son Jamal because he's gay, but. Tiana's bisexual. Oh, that's a okay because she's a girl. So it's just like with this episode with the two girls in the club touching on each other, about you know, touching on each other. It just you know, it make you it make you wonder. Like, so it's okay for them to do it, but because your son's actually gay, you know, oh, you ain't rocking with that. I don't like, think he likes like, men being gay, but if it's but if, it, gay, but if it's but if it's women, then it's a okay. And it's yeah, just like it's a lot of men like, out there that's like, like that. And it, it just makes you go, well, why? So what is that? Why does that intimidate you? They think they're sexy and it intimidates them because it makes that man that they looking at less of a man and if you really think about it exactly that's what it's all about i'm telling y'all pay attention to this show because the messages that lee daniels and danny strong are putting in this show is man it, it's like, like they, they were talking about the illuminati in the beginning i couldn't believe they went straight for it they was like they went straight yeah remember they used to think they was an illuminati i'm like I'm what they they touch they on talk so about many everything. things. Like, like he said, they don't, like, they don't fuck around. Understand. They touch on everything. If you really want to be in the music industry, you need to watch this this entertainment show. industry in general. Period. Like, yeah, you they talk about the everything, everything, the demographics, what, how how you're gonna get marketable, promotable, all this type of shit. And then it's like, um, so yeah, they pretty much were in the club, and um, they got the song to play, and everybody reacted to it good. And um, pretty much they got the song promoted, mm-hmm. and hey, you know, his song was top charting, and you know, mm-hmm. hey, he was doing the damn thing. So next we see, and again, y'all, we are like, we are all over the place, y'all will have to forgive us <laughs> for that. But next um, we pretty much see, um, shit, I'm trying to see, oh yeah, 
So next we see uh while they were in the club, Hakeem lo and behold, Hakeem comes in the club and he pretty much um he was all you can tell he was drunk off his ass and he was like, Oh yeah, Jamal, can you help me out with this song? Nah, 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 nah. And he helped with the hook, song. And then, you know, song. Cookie was like, Oh, what's wrong? Are you okay? Uh Hakeem is like, oh, okay, well we'll come over we'll we'll both come over and listen to your song with you and he got mad at her and he's like, I ain't invite you and Jamal just pretty much let his ass know this. How long did you think he was gonna let you use him to, you know, get your career ahead and push him back? How long did you think he was gonna let you disrespect y'all mother in front of him like that? You the same and then on top of that, Jamal didn't say this, but Hakeem, you the same person who was at home in your feelings, going through your tablet, looking at pictures of Tiana with her girlfriend India, then when Tiana called your ass, you had declined and then you had called Camilla, who didn't even pick up on your ass. It's just like, you know, Hakeem is really He's something he's very he's vulnerable. Going, he's going through. Like, he's like a look like right now, yeah. He's calling like he's her. Very, he's calling his feelings like drunk or some shit. He's yeah, calling his feelings like drunk or some shit. Like, 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 come on, like, man. Who is you to me? Mommy. Like, the fuck? Uh, I'm telling y'all, he is, Hakeem is really fucked up take, in the head. You need to take that titty out your mouth. Literally. Literally. It's some dudes out here that never had their mama, and they they, they never knew they, mama. they never knew why they never had their mama. And then when they end up finding out when they got older that their mama did something, they had to sacrifice uh, whatever For they that. understand. But it was it's a some guys out there that mama is on drugs and they okay, and they still love their mama. So and you over here, your mama did a big old sacrifice, and you still act like a little bit naive. I'm telling you, like, it's just, it's sad. It's really sad, y'all. Like, this, like, with Hakeem, I don't know. I don't know what's going to bring him and Cookie together because, as y'all can tell in the preview for next week's episode, oh, I believe, you know, ha not Hakeem, oh, shit. In next week's episode, Lucius drops the bomb and he lets the family know that he has ALS or whatever. So, you know, I don't know if that's going to bring the family closer. Really, I don't think, here's the thing. When he tells them that he has ALS, I wonder, here's what I'm wondering. Will that then change the dynamic of Lucius and Jamal? Because think about it. Your father, who's been homophobic towards you all your fucking all life, your life, is about to pretty much die. Will that change the dynamic? Will that change how he sees you as a, not just as a man, but as his own fucking flesh and blood? Will that change that dynamic? I want to say no, because then that would kind of throw the show off. So even though he's dying, he probably will still treat his son like shit just because he's gay. But... His son will probably be more understanding towards him. And then, I, I don't know, y'all, because I just, this show really makes you think. Like, when you see the previews for the next episode, you just be like, well, damn, if this is going to happen, how is that going to change the dynamic of the show? It's just so much shit that, it's just so much shit that you really got to pay attention to and that you really yeah. got to think about. Like, I'm just... I'm just kind of blown away from it. You know what I'm saying? And then um, I was blown a lot of times. I was blown. I ain't gonna lie. I was blown a lot of times when they. Oh yeah. Speaking of uh, not because you're speaking of our team, he was recording this song. It was pretty much like a song. You can tell it was aimed at Tiana, and it was like an anti-woman song. It was pretty much like the songs you hear on the radio from niggas like the Migos and Young Thug and Rich Homie Quan and Lil Wayne. It was one of those songs like "Fuck These Bitches." It was one of those type of songs. Bitch ass niggas. Exactly. So he recorded that song, and then uh, while Jamal, while Jamal and Cookie were walking towards the front, they heard the they overhear the song playing. They go in there and see Anika, uh, Lucius, and um Hakeem. and Hakeem listening to the song, and then Jamal just flat out said, "You forgot one thing. You made a song that the song about how you hate women, which makes you look like a little bitch." Child, listen. Cookie I looked, had died. <laughs> Cookie looked at him like, "Whoa," because. <laughs> That's probably the first time that she's seen that side of Jamal. That masculinity. He called, he, like, called, he can be masculine. He don't, he don't be... He you don't, don't be have feminine. to be feminine to be gay. Exactly. And that's what a lot of people in the world... A lot of people in the world really think that these dudes out here that are gay have to be feminine. And you do not have to be feminine to be gay. And that's you a whole other... You be as well. That's a exactly. whole... Exactly. That's, that's a like whole other topic that's for a like whole other video. For real, with females. That's like... Even you, for females, that's like that. Like, for real. You don't have to be like that. Just because he's like gay yeah. don't mean anything. Exactly. Like and that's what Bubba loses. Like even Cookie knew he was gonna be gay, and yeah, that's why like, I love and respect her because she was like, at the I end of the day, you. I got you. And he kept. That's why he remembers that, and he loves her. That's why the, uh, out of the, the three sons, the he's closest. the only one that loves her because he knows that she's gonna do what she says she's gonna do. He knew, like, that's that's the kind of thing that kind of made me mad, that the fact that Andre disrespect and 
just nah, don't talk to really, him. He don't really talk don't to him at all. Don't mess with Cookie at all. Like, we, he, he'll stand up for his father. He gave her a hug. Exactly. You just look at the camera like, really, nigga? And I'm like, dying. Like, that's like, how you felt? Like you don't the, know. You the oldest. You should not uh, You should understand that the sacrifice she done. I guess not. I swear. And then, like, um, so after they did that song, Child, listen, I had to drop my comb. After they did that song, after they listened to the song, and they was walking towards the front. Oh, yeah. Whew. After they, they was walking towards the front. Big man. None of the. I had to get loud on y'all for a minute, but none other than the queen herself, Raven Simone. I was so happy. I dropped. I screamed to the heavens when I see her. I was like, "Yeah, Raven! Yeah, she came back, honey! Yeah, uh, she came back, and she looked the eyes." I'm looked telling y'all, y'all, Raven came the down, and she was um. At first, here's the thing: her hair was all fleek, body on ten, outfit on honey. Okay, like that's Let's how she it. looked. She was like that in order, in order. I swear, and at first when she came there, I thought that she was like a long lost family member or some shit, or she was like a relative that, you know, now that they got money, she came around. Come to find out, at first I thought she was like a cousin or something like that. And, yeah, and on top of that, and on first and on top of that, I kinda thought she was on that stuff. I thought she was on the way that she looked in the face, I swear. At first I thought she was on crack and I'm like, Oh damn, y'all gonna do her like that. But actually, no. She came there. And she, um, her and Jamal, they used to date. Now, let, now, before I get any further, this is a sad note. Pretty much, here's what I think happened. Back in the day, when Jamal was probably going through his whole, you know, sexuality phase, and he was, you know, trying to figure out if he was really gay or not, he most likely, him and uh, Olivia, which is Raven Simone's character, her, her character name is Olivia, they uh, most likely dated and they hooked up for a while because he wanted to know, but he wanted to make sure if he was gay or not. Because that, and that's a lot, of, and that's the thing that a lot of uh, gay yeah. men go through in the black community or just in every community. They want to make sure, you know, are they gay or not? So they will, you know, date a woman or have or flat out have sex with a woman. And you know, if it doesn't feel right afterwards, then it's like they know for sure that they're gay or whatever. Yeah, they don't have so to you know, doing. clearly our our friend Jamal clearly forgot. The one important thing when you have sex, a fucking yeah. condom. Because condom. Raven, uh, Miss Olivia came there, and, uh, you know, when the security guard, when Derek Luke character told Lucius, you know, when he told Lucius about um about the girl, Lucius was like, yeah, I remember her. He had a look in his face like, what the hell she want? And pretty much, you know, uh, Jamal had walked towards her. They were talking for a little bit. And she was talking about, oh, yeah, they keep playing your songs on the radio. And, you know, Lola here, she just she just won't stop singing it. And, you know, you could tell Lola, the little girl didn't want to sing that damn song. But her uh, Olivia was just, you know, she whispered, it, 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 she whispered something in her ear. She was just like, you know, try to be like, you don't sing the song, I'm going to beat your ass. That's probably what she told her. Like, I'm going to beat your ass if you don't sing this song. And so she was like, you know, she was like, yeah, you know, she sang the song because she wanted to meet her daddy. Ah, uh, I had to fall. Whew, I had to fall out on that, y'all. She said that Lola wanted to meet her daddy. Child, listen. On that yeah. note, this we will come back next night. <laughs> Child, listen. What? Yeah. What? The thing is, don't kill me, though, is that Raven Simone's character, Olivia, plays the typical, the typical black female dad. Baby mama, Baby that's mama gonna, for that's real. That's going to pop up when your because ass becomes something, when, when you become shit. Not only that, she pop shit. up when you come up, when you got something. The baby look a hot ass, and that baby hell was not on sleep. That baby hell was I mean, it was, it was, it was No, it was natural. It no, was natural. it was a natural nappy. <laughs> I, I'm a natural, too, as you can see. I am a natural, but that hell... Her hair was meant. They could. She could at least put a bow or something in her hair. True, Them, true, uh, true. Put some oil in it. It's a way you can do it. It's all over the place. And then her outfit. She looked just like a ragged runaway doll. Like she just looked ugly. And she looking all pretty on the side. And so her hair. Her hair on ten. Her nails on fleek. Her she body was, on she, ten. Her dress all pretty. She was the stereotypical. The little girl baby. looked all ugly. The little girl looked all ugly as ever. I was true. like, what? You know what? She's right. You're right. That. She looked all ugly. You right, she is this her character is the stereotypical baby there mama that, that's gonna she gonna she, she, she gonna she keep herself that money. she gonna she keep herself up she gonna keep herself up but her child is gonna look like a mess. She is the stereotypical baby mama. Yeah. So it's just like and then the fact that and then in a uh, in a preview for the next episode, so and you just wait you know, six years waiting to basically tell Jamal that, that oh yeah you, you had, had a child, baby. by the way. What? 
And then, okay, here's the thing, though, because now let's, okay, now let's play a little rewind. So in the first episode, in the pilot, Jamal and Lucius were talking, and he was saying, that, oh, you know, Jamal, you got to get ready to drop another album. So here's my thing. If Jamal dropped one album already, you didn't show up. But now with all this shit going on, the IPO, and then Jamal finally got one of his songs on the radio, and he got a little bit of clout, and he just did an interview with uh with Sway. Now you you know what a rush now you want to come up out of nowhere. So it's just out of like nowhere to say and then yeah, that, did she want to meet her daddy what? six years later? Six fucking years later, and then on top of that. It's like, you know, on the next, on a preview for the next episode when Cookie was yelling at Lucius before he dropped dead on her ass, well, fainted, she was pretty much like, how dare you try to get um Jamal the mayor? So, I mean, pretty much this is kind of a I spoiler, but yeah. I think Jamal, I think that Lucius, is, with Olivia back in the picture, and apparently we get a little bit of background into her, her character, she was a backup singer, pretty much Lucius, I think, is going to take this as a, as some type of, you know, some type a way of way to, to like you know work the situation with Jamal, Jamal cover up his sexuality. Yeah. Because speaking of the Sway interview, um, when he went to do this, when he went to Sway, he did this other song called "I Want to Love You," which was good by the way. Song. It was good. He was on um, performing it, and then when him and Sway did the interview, his voice. His voice is amazing. I swear. And then when him and um when him and Sway did the interview. They um Sway was like, Do you have like a special lady in your life? And he, and he, he, had, like, he looked he at Michael. Cookie. No, he looked at Cookie. Cookie was like, Well, you can say it, you, you know. Can say it, but say uh, it. I mean, like, and I he mean, didn't say it. And then Jamal was like, You know, uh huh, it's whatever. But what killed me was Michael, he is such a bitch. Because he like he didn't like say he didn't me. Know he didn't acknowledge, he didn't acknowledge me. me, dude. Bitch. <laughs> You understand that he couldn't acknowledge you because of some said that he do not want to just say out of nowhere I'm gay. Oh, and then on top of that, because his about father it. threatened him, so you don't want to just out of nowhere No, not just it. that, but think about it. This is we're going. Okay, I'm gonna tie this in with the whole Nicki Minaj situation with her boyfriend. Yeah. She said in her interview with Angie Martinez, the industry makes you single because, and okay, in Nicki's case. You have to have women that want to be like you, and you gotta have men that want to sleep with you. If you are, if you come out and you're in a relationship as an as an artist or even as an actor or whatever the case is, that will take it away will take a demographic from you and take away a lot of money from you. The industry yeah. makes you single. So Michael, not really understanding the industry, ignorant ass. Anyway, him not understanding the industry, yeah. he doesn't understand that. Here's the thing. I'm sure that Jamal didn't want to deny you like that and put on national, you know, radio, national, the internet, worldwide internet, but the industry yeah, makes yeah, you single. Yeah. And then on top of that, just like you said, with his sexuality, it's like, well, his father, well, I mean, yeah, his father was still going, I mean, his father already cut him off or whatever the case is, but mm-hmm. it's like, you know, it's just like, here's the thing. Okay, let's tie this in with Frank Ocean. When Frank Ocean came out, yeah, Target had all his CDs, and then he then, said, "I'm gay." And then, they took all his CDs out of the stores, and I'm like, "Dad, and then, up. and then on top of that, I'm sure that when even even though Frank Ocean came out, you still he still had women that were willing to go to his concerts and live, watch him perform and listen to his music, but probably not as many women because he came out. Yeah. And so it's like when you come out, it's like it takes away the demographic, it messes up the demographics because. You know, people are still even, even though we're that, in that football play that came Michael out. Michael Sam, the same thing. So even as though we're in the year 2015, it's still a it's still a long way to go for there to be total acceptance and equality. So again, that's why I love this show so much because it's the messages in the show. Yeah. It's like it's the messages in the show to me. I would say is really like a mirror for Black America to look into because you know it's just. Here's the thing, Michael, you can't understand that Jamal is about to blow up and be famous, like I said earlier in this review. You can move your ass over and listen. You can make room. Okay? You can make room. So anyway, like I was saying Oh my goodness. <laughs> hey, listen, I'd rather be listen, I'd rather be the main course than the side piece. Uh oh, uh, 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 give me that. I'm yeah. telling you. I mean, then again, I probably I would probably play a good side piece role. I mean, don't give me no crazy ass bullshit, bro. But anyway, yeah. um, huh, let me not burn my bridges. Anyway, <laughs> but anyway, y'all, that's pretty much all we got for this video for the review. We are gonna come back in a little bit with the uh, video about the theories for Empire because we have a lot of theories that we finna just put out there, and it's pretty much like in the comment section for that video, it'll be like a you know, like a, you know, a Q and A type of thing, like yeah. you know. 
we all have we have the theories. We want to know what are your thoughts, and then you know we go off of that with the comments. So again, we thank y'all for tuning in, and we apologize for being you know all over the place. Yes. But hey, this show it's like when you watch the show, you get that adrenaline rush, and you be excited as hell. We just you know the excitement took over. It is what it is. Empire, God, it's only up we go from here. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all we got, you guys. So, you know, shout out to all my new subscribers who are new to this channel. And uh, let me see how many subscribers I got. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I'm at 159. But anyway, um, still, it's only up we go from here, y'all. So, shout out to all of y'all. Love y'all. Thank you. We are signing off. Prince Onyx, Princess Adina, we are out. Thank you guys for tuning in. Yes. Peace. Empire, come on now. Eee.